And up next, the hot debate that's rocking the southern part of India. The question everybody is asking is that why did Google choose Andhra Pradesh over Karnataka? If you remember, Google is betting $15 billion in Vishakapatnam for one of India's largest AI data center campuses, leaving Karnataka to watch Andhra as it steps into the global spotlight. And this decision has sparked debate across various political leaders and business circles with people from both states weighing in on why the eastern coast of India beat the Silicon Valley of India. Now, the Vishakapatnam campus will leverage the city's coastal location and proximity to undersea cable landing stations, which gives Google an international connectivity advantage. And former Infosys CEO Mohandas Pai, in a conversation with AIM Today Morning, highlighted that leadership, vision and execution all embodied by Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister N. Chandrababu Naidu were the decisive factors luring in the investment. Look, you have policies like Andhra's 99 Paise land model, diverse renewable energy mix, and a focus on long-term infrastructure. All of this have helped create a compelling ecosystem for large-scale AI investments. And Andhra Pradesh expects this initiative to generate over 1 lakh jobs and contribute to its ambitious goal of $2.4 trillion economy by 2047. And let's get to Karnataka, because the state is defending its status as India's premier tech hub, pointing to the central government in, in incentives given to Andhra Pradesh and the upcoming initiatives like the Greater Bengaluru Integrated Township, called as GBIT, in Bidadi. And the tussle highlights a new era of competitive federalism, where states are vying to define India's AI future. Because now we have a round of political reactions and war of words. Because this announcement triggered a volley of reactions from various female famous people and leaders and various political parties in Karnataka circles. And of course, to begin with, Nara Lokesh, Andhra Pradesh's IT minister, highlighted Andhra's proactive approach in a provoking manner, saying, They say Andhra food is spicy. Seems some of our investments are too. Some neighbors are already feeling the burn. And K. Sudhakar, who is the MP of Karnataka representing BJP, expressed disappointment, saying Bengaluru and Karnataka are losing out due to government apathy and policy paralysis. He lamented decades of hard-earned reputation being eroded. Now, Priyank Karge was quick to reply to Nara Lokesh. The Karnataka IT minister, of course, defended the state and added a cheeky jab. Everyone enjoys a bit of spice in their food. But just as nutritionists recommend a balanced diet, economists too advocate a balanced budget. The neighbor's total liabilities have now ballooned to nearly 10 lakh crore rupees. And whatever said and done, we will always be neighbor's envy and owner's pride. Meanwhile, Nikhil Kumar from the Janta Dal, who is also the son of HD Kumaraswamy, the former chief minister of Karnataka, joined the fray with a sharp critique to the in-power government of Karnataka. Andhra is cooking up investments while Karnataka's ministers are busy cooking excuses is what he said. Andhra is attracting Google, Karnataka's ministers are threatening people who use it. No roads, no funds, no jobs, but just reels, real estate and rhetoric is what he added. It looks like Andhra's spice burns hotter than Bengaluru's asphalt these days. He added further humour, saying if launch failures were an Olympic sport, your supremo would have won gold 47 times. He also called he's the only leader who's been launched more times than Bengaluru startups, except none of his launches ever take off. And of course, Karnataka Congress Party were quick to defend their ruling chief minister and fired back with a state-heavy rebuttal to Nikhil Kumar. No jobs, no funds in Karnataka? Sit down, bro, is what Indian National Congress called Nikhil Kumar. We're here to educate you with facts, not feelings, because Karnataka is India's investment magnet. And they threw a bunch of stats. And let me read it out to you. 
they pointed towards a 54,427 crore rupees in FDI from FY23 to 24. They also pointed from semiconductors to EVs, startups to smart infrastructure. The state is cooking with real billions. Bengaluru startups raised nearly $3.4 billion across 285 deals and this marks a 14% year-on-year increase and with seed stage funding up by 26%. And H1 2025 alone, the first half, the amount racked up to $1.7 billion. And you have global giants building here that include AMD, Applied Materials, LAM Research, Foxconn, and of course, the massive Google Ananta campus that was launched earlier this year. They also focus towards the thriving talent, scaling infrastructure, and the flowing capital. And told Nikhil that the unemployment crisis seems to be yours. This multi-layered funny exchange underscores a new era of competitive federalism, with states not just competing for investment, but also using political narrative and social media to assert dominance in India's AI and tech future. But also we've had an expert analysis and a more neutral take as to why Andhra had an edge. So as mentioned in a conversation with AIM today, Mohandas Pai, who leads RN Capital and the former CEO of Infosys, offered a much calm, neutral and a balanced perspective. He said that leadership matters and credited Chandrababu Naidu for personally engaging with investors, committing on the spot and for his rapid execution. He also pointed how geography is critical because Vishakapatnam is a coastal location. So it allows access to subsea cables under the sea which is vital for large-scale data centers to transfer data and information across borders. And Karnataka may have just overlooked Mangaluru's potential in this aspect. He also shed light on policy and execution. So you have Andhra's lift policy and the 99 PSA land model, which provide a clear framework for scaling such large-scale projects. But Mohandas Pai also outlined a roadmap for Karnataka to regain its leadership which is to invest 10,000 crore annually in innovation and research. Then of course, develop coastal data center hubs in the Mangaluru region, promote electronics and chip packaging in Hubballi, Darwad and Belagavi, and fund biotech startups with 500 crore rupees annually. Besides, he also told we need to prioritize bold thinking over defensiveness to remain competitive in AI and high tech sectors. Because the Google investment is more than just a capital infusion. It signals the shifting dynamics of India's tech landscape. And this time, Andhra Pradesh has demonstrated that leadership, infrastructure and proactive execution can outpace even established hubs like Karnataka. Currently, for Karnataka, the challenge is clear. Bold policy making, strategic investments and leveraging untapped geographic and sectoral potential remains super essential for it to retain or continue its status as India's technology powerhouse. And remember, let nobody forget that Karnataka is India's highest IT exporter. The ecosystem is already present and thriving. While it may have missed a deal this time, there may be countless ones in the pipeline for the stage. Because Karnataka had over 4 lakh crore rupees worth exports in IT, whereas Telangana and Andhra Pradesh put together had IT exports of just rupees 1.24 lakh, and this is for the period of Y23 to 24. As states why to define India's AI future, the real winners will be those that combine vision and execution and the broader ecosystem of talent, innovation, and opportunity that follows. Now, you have many people on social media not being on either sides of the debate. They're saying that, look, we are, after all, we're a single country. If Google opens up a data center in Andhra Pradesh, every Indian citizen can reap the benefits. Moreover, states should collaboratively work together to rake up the infrastructure and build more potential large-scale projects. But of course, political dynamics come into play. And after all, both Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka have rival parties working together. Thank you.